And now for something completely different. Smoke medical. We eat every day. The following thoughts on Hoffy Hour represent Brian Hoffy and Pastis. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four, three, two, Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. That's my name. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy. Pharaoh. Young God. What up? We are 13 days away from the Pharaoh and Friends. Can I include my name somewhere in it? Of course. And happy party. Happy 30th to me. Gino from Q105 was like, you've been talking about your birthday a lot. Yeah, because I'm turning 30. It's going to be lit, bro. Can't wait. For people that want to go to the Pharaoh and Friends pool party, tell them about it real quick. Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Listen, Labor Day weekend, me and Ryan Hoppy are going to have a blast. And we're definitely going to have a lot of things that, you know, you should be having in your Labor Day weekend, which is liquor, women. Beautiful women. And of course, good vibes. Uh, if you need some more information, make sure to hit me up on my Instagram at YNG Pharaoh. I'm going to have all the tickets and all the information if you want bottles, uh, yes. VIPs, or anything. And, you know, we're going to make sure to take care of you. You want to hear what the party's going to sound like? <laughs> Dive in the pool! <laughs> it's going to be so much fun. Um. Got a lot of news to talk about with Britney Spears. Because I just want to get it out of the way. Because, like, you got to talk about it. You can't ignore it. It's kind of like an STD. Like, you look at it, and you're reminded every day. And you're like, oh, yeah, she's around. I forgot that she was a thing. I kind of forgot she was a thing. Man, we're going crazy here. I kind of forgot she was a thing. For, like, a year, you just never heard about her. She was wife down. Uh, Britney? Yeah. Yeah, but Brittany, you know, she's a very controversial woman now. And, uh, you know, I don't like her. I feel kind of bad with the conservative ship, but a part of me, pardon me for saying this, um, maybe she should be under a conservative ship. She's kind of bad shit crazy, bro. I don't like talking too much about Britney Spears because I had a big crush on her. And, you know, we all did. She's the reason half of the millennials love women. You know, that song Toxic had me really litty. Yeah. No, for me, it was Hit Me Baby One More Time. That hit, song will always... Hit me, baby, one more time. Or uh, the one where it's never her fault. What was it? Uh, woman, neither, woman, neither, there you are. Remember that? Or are you just going to leave me hanging, singing Britney Spears? Like no, I'm listen, to- Britney Spears, her catalog is just amazing. Yeah. And, you know, like, where we crystallize the image of Britney Spears is not who she is today. Yeah. So, you know, these days we just try to We like, don't even know her. She's just some crazy imbecile. I think she's a clone at this point. Like She's a loser, bro. And uh, so she's divorcing Sam Asghari. And this is the first part where she's such a loser. Because everybody's commenting online. They're like, Sam Asghari, you know, is kind of a grifter. He's a cloud chaser. How do you know that? Were you in the house? Supposedly, a year ago, all you free Britney losers were saying, oh, he's the best thing to happen to her. Shut up. You don't know anything. Explicit video of Britney Spears with a member of her staff may be why Sam Asghari finally pulled the trigger on this divorce. You know what's weird? They have such big houses, it's probably so easy to cheat. You can just, like, think about having a mansion. Like, you can't really just cheat in a small apartment. But think about it. She, she was probably just going down on other guys in the yoga room while he was doing his job or whatever. I don't know what he does for a living. Which is probably nothing. But listen, I mean, yeah, when, let's you're, be rich, when you're rich, is, I think it's easier to cheat because you got so much stuff going on for you. You have the money to pay hotels, yeah. Airbnbs. And, and let me tell you, cheating will always catch up to you. I have seen it firsthand where you can get along and you can make it happen for a while, but whatever energy you put out to the universe claiming to have a family and a life, it will always come back to bite you in the ass. Yeah. Um, you sound like you're talking like you're talking from experience. Were you the cheater? No, I said I witnessed allegedly. Not that I I've literally never cheated. Actually, I actually, actually, you know what? I actually have women that have wanted to bang me while I'm in a relationship, and then when I get out of the relationship, they're not into me. Uh, it's insane. You know, that's kind of what happens with women. Like, yeah, with, they with, they want you when they can't have you, exactly. but when they can have you, you're just a pathetic grifter, like Sam Ascari. <laughs> 
Uh, Jesus Christ, it drives me nuts. I mean, do you feel that? No, I, I totally agree with you 100%. Women just want to see you as an object. You know, especially when you're in a relationship. Look at this tall, muscular man. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, why is he with her? I want him. We're very morning zoo today. We're very wild. Sam believes that she cheated with a house staffer. And sources say he claims there's video of Brittany in a compromising position with the male employee. Hell yeah, doing the yoga. This led to a blowout fight and ultimately their divorce. It does sort of feel like a shakedown a little bit, right? No shakedown because he's getting Zippo. Yes, according to the prenup, Sam gets nothing, not even- That's gonna suck in a way. Like, you deal with her and her bad crap crazy personality and nothing that's likable about her. Because she's Britney Spears, we all defend her. She has, because I have experience with this, not cheating, but with this, crazy girl eyes. She looks nuts, bro. Like, you know when you start dating a crazy girl and it's fun, the sex is wild, unpredictable, they want to hang out till three in the morning and then you live with them and then it's out the window. That's what you should have added, the uh, uh, the Halloween uh, knife, knife music behind it. Yeah, I mean, because think about it. Have you ever um, had like a bad breakup? Uh, plenty. <laughs> and it's the worst feeling ever because then you have to be like stoic about it and not have any emotion because if the man shows emotion he's being a pussy he's being a wimp but if uh you know a woman shows oh let's cuddle there we go samus gar is in the other room cranking it out while she's banging a pool boy or whatever I find her repulsive. I think one of the grossest things, and I know all girls fart and poop, but there was a headline like 15 years ago that she would just rip ass behind the scenes. And to me, I always look at Britney Spears and I just think about her ripping ass. You know, like it just, it's just like her legacy. I could see her eating like circus peanuts, a large pizza, and then like, I don't know, grapes. Just like the most random meal. The amount of money Britney Spears has, she should be looking way better than a Kardashian. That's just that's yeah. just the first note. And she has talent, even though she... Have you heard her really sing? It's better than her actual voice. It's very jazzy. It's very open mic, like perform at Janice Live in front of 2,000 people. It's not a worldwide tour, but it's better. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's probably way better than half of the artists right now in the industry. But for him to leave her and, and end up with nothing, I think is a very foolish move for him. Because you could have just played the game. Like, if you knew you signed a prenup, you should have stayed, buddy. And you should have had five more girlfriends yeah. and still be living good. Because now you're going to go and be broke. Because I, I know you weren't making the type of money where you were, like, you're going to have the same lifestyle. She was probably paying for their meals at Nobu. Exactly. But they also never really leave the house. I wonder if there's a part of him. Because um, there's a legendary Bill Burr quote. Do you know who Bill Burr is? No, but let's find out who it is. Bill Burr. Is a quote, or no, he's a quote. He's a comedian that used to go on the Opie and Anthony show. He was the voice of the dad on uh, F is for Family, one of the biggest comedians ever. Here's the mindset Sam Asghari needs to have. Here is the mindset I've had with breakups. It goes like this this is the quote from Bill Burr. Realize that sleeping on a futon when you're 30 is not the worst thing. You know what's worse? Sleeping in a king bed next to a wife you're really not in love with, but for some reason you married, and you got a couple of kids and a job you hate. You'll be laying there fantasizing about sleeping on a futon alone. There's no risk after, uh, there's no risk when you go after a dream. There's a tremendous amount of risk to playing it safe. I think that's a solid quote right there. It's the best quote ever. I'm just telling you right now, Sam Asghari needs to look at that and be like, yeah, I'm going to probably have to live in a small apartment in LA, but there's going to be so many girls that are going to want to hook up with him. Oh, no, see, of course. See what he brings to the table. His first year is going to be like full of just, you know, saying horny. And then second year is going to be like, he's going to have to wipe down because he's going to be forgotten. No, he's going to be broke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wonder how much money he has. Um, so she was cheating on him on a house member. And then the other part is... Um, I'm not trying to make this projection about breakups, but I have now looked at any of my ex-girlfriend's social media since I broke up. I don't know what color hair they have. I wish them the best. But you often hear that they'll pose in lingerie. You know, they'll, they'll do little things. Like there's always those memes after a breakup. It's like when you're dating her and the girl's all messy. And then after the breakup and she's like in like a Louis Vuitton outfit or I don't know if that, but you know what I'm saying? Like she's in lingerie. Being a whore. 
Hell yeah. Allegedly, she can do what she wants with that body. Um, But here's the thing. You're going to have to really work on that when we get on the radio. I'm just kidding, bro. Here's the thing. This next headline right here, I'm telling you, is her trying to hurt Sam Asghari. It says here, Britney Spears parties with shirtless men. Not a, no, 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 not a man. It's plural. Britney Spears seems to be distracting herself amid her split from Sam Asghari. On Sunday, the 41-year-old pop star took to her Instagram to share a video of a mystery man licking up and down her leg. She looks like a trash bag. Like She looks like anybody you see at like downtown St. Pete at, at like... I don't want to talk shit about any of the bars in downtown St. Pete because I adore downtown St. Pete. But imagine one of the dive bars. I'm trying to think about what it would be for Tampa. Like, and she's just alone. And it says a lot about somebody when you're, if a, okay, I got to be careful how I say this because I'm really good looking too. But if you're a beautiful girl and you're single in your late thirties, there's something wrong. Like if you're consistently single over and over again, it pretty much means that you're a psycho. But pretty yeah. much how she looks in this video is how somebody is around uh two thirty AM in Ebor City. Yeah, she's got like her uh shades on and this dude's licking her leg and she's in like an outfit that's kinda skanky. Which went into a group of shirtless guys holding her by a pool. Along What's so funny? You're laughing. <laughs> Cause you like you called her a skank, so whatever. I said skanky, I didn't say skank. Hey, skanky is pretty much skank. <laughs> <laughs> I know you I, I, the, the the E at yeah. the end, doesn't No, no, doesn't no. Really... I said Skanky. Yeah, Skanky. Doesn't that's change. that's the name of the new radio show in town. Skanky and the Monkey in the Morning. I wasn't calling her a skank. Because I would never say that about someone that after a breakup with a guy that was pretty loyal and you cheat. You're out at a pool with five men. Alongside the wild video, Brittany shared her own personal account of how she got there. Penning, when you... I hit up a bunch of guys and I was like, I'm really lonely and I have no personality besides my singing where I'm hiding behind an auto-tune. So I really need men to approve of me and give me approval because I have... Ugh, God, she's the worst. Listen, Britney Spears right now is exactly who I thought Paris Hilton would be <laughs> at this age. And then Paris Hilton got wiped down, bro. Paris Hilton became everything that nobody thought she would be. It's like, crazy. She I, lived yeah. her like her best youngest years. Doing all the cocaine and going to jail. Going to jail. Uh, uh, what else? Doing all the sex tapes more than Kim Kardashian. It was a better tape, bro. She really brought it. Like, uh, Kim's was lame, bro. But Paris's, I would rather hook up with Paris than Kim. Well, Paris looks like a delightful time, bro. Well, I think Kim Kardashian did it for the money. I mean, I don't know. Ray J has some comments and says that this was all planned by the mom. Duh. But. Momager. Yeah, but but everybody else is trying to, like, you know, discredit him. But, you know, I'm, for this one, I'm going to go with, with Ray J. All right, so here is uh, what Britney Spears wrote. <laughs> and this is what I'm talking about with, like, her reminding me of, like, farts. Because I never forget 15 years ago, the rumor was she always rips ass behind the scenes. It says here. When you go to meet up with a so-called friend and drive an hour for chicken, then you have to wait in the car and need to use the bathroom. What? That's what she wrote. And need to use the... She probably... And I'm not trying to be scatological, but because I, I think poop humor is the lowest of low. She must go to the bathroom all the time. It must be like she has to pull over... I, I, I know paps were tipped off because the car I was in was never used before. So how was I followed... Because everybody knows who you are. doesn't matter. Britney Spears is out. They probably have a GPS tracker on her body that she's unaware of. Somebody probably, probably once like patted her on the back, and she has like a little tracker, and like TMZ and everybody at all times knows where she is. I'm pretty sure she's leaving from the same house every day, so it's pretty easy to follow every single car that leaves. And there's probably, a, a, there's probably somebody that just sits there. No, no, no. And there's probably somebody in the house who sells the information, because you always need somebody... To yeah. get you all the dirty, the dirt. And if there is one word to describe the great Britney Spears, it would be dirty. I uh, She just grosses me out. And the whole free Britney movement was the lamest thing I have ever seen. Why was the free Britney movement lame? Because the whole basis was she's under this conservative ship. She's being exploited by the media. Back in 07... When the paparazzi followed her and all these Gen Z's were like five years old. So here's what happens. 
Gen Z then make a podcast where they're pretending to care about her, but they're doing the same thing TMZ began with and are doing the same thing that all the articles began with by talking about her. For example, when she went off of social media like two years ago, I saw this in a documentary. What did she do? She had all her fans debating where she went. If you really cared about Britney, you wouldn't have made an episode about where she's at because you would want her to be private. But you're a bunch of fucking vultures and a bunch of losers with no talent. It was, it was insane. It drove me nuts. Listen, the whole celebrity uh, yeah. campaigns these days is just... Free Britney! Free I, I, Britney. I mean, honestly, I used to think it was mean when people would say, oh, she doesn't... They would say something like, oh, she doesn't deserve to be under this, or her parents are being mean. Honestly, look at back at the situation, brah. The parents used her, obviously, but she probably deserves to be under that. She is mentally ill. Well, I mean, there's probably a lot of stuff that we don't know while she was growing up, you know, versus Paris Hilton. A lot of, of her personal stuff, you know, was in the public eye. Yeah. We didn't know what, what, uh, what Brady Spears was doing as she was growing up mistakes sex tapes well it was sad even that like episode when she was on the disney club at like age four the guy's like you're gonna give men a lot of trouble in the future it's like 92 91 you're like ugh. yeah well now she is (laughs) i mean to be fair not to be fair because it wasn't a right comment to say to a four-year-old but he kind of like predicted the future Mm -hmm. dude i did it again yeah i um i gotta be careful how i say this i want to ask you this because a lot of times I'll get comments from women that are like, oh, yeah, the feral guy's kind of a misogynist. I've gotten like two or three. Here's the thing. I want to ask you this. So I was at, um, I got, I, everyone knows where I go every day, so I got to be careful. But I was at a place where there was a lot of people, and there was this uh, mom, beautiful MILF, probably 31 or 32 years old. Bad. Like, she could totally ditch her kid for the night and go to your pool party. Like, she was bad, bro. Hottie. Two tattoos, nice body, gorgeous. So she has a kid that she brings out a lot. And her uh, man, I guess, I overheard her talking because she was telling the whole place. Her man works nine to five, five days a week, and doesn't really have time to be around the kid. And then when he does have a day off, he wants to play poker with his boys. And I was like, and that's why I got a vasectomy. It's because I can see where she's saying, or she wants the man to be around. I, I get it. But damn, what is the point of having kids? That sounds terrible. Does she work? No. Happy hour. Happy hour. Um, <clears throat> that pretty much, you know, starts the conversation. You know, it's pretty hard. And, you know, I mean, everybody has their own way of kind of like handling the, uh, the relationship. But happy hour will be right back. But what? But I, I just heard that. And I was like, the dudes, I don't want to use the word slave. He's working away for eight to nine hours. I just feel like women are never satisfied. Let me you do, got the kid. You got what you wanted. Everybody thinks there's this magical, oh, I get married and have a kid. It's going to fulfill my life. No, it's going to be a disaster. You know, I, I'm about to tell a little story about- Please, you know, please do. I want to hear. How, how women are really, you could never satisfy them yeah. because- I got to put on some just, story time music. Just, do you have a, t- a tale from your past? Something that happened to uh, good old Pharaoh Pharaoh? I just, I, I lived it. I seen, I seen a woman and I hope, you know, that the podcast don't blow up that much where. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. It's going to, we're going on the radio soon. So you got to be careful what you say. Perfect. Uh, go on. Yeah. So um, let me tell you about a story about a young lady um, who, you know, used to live in Miami or, or lives in Miami. Oh yeah. It says a lot. She had a man who made a lot of money. And when I say a lot of money, I'm talking about, you know, at least 30, 40,000 a month. No, that's a lot. That's that's a lot. And, um, you know, she was not happy that the man was always working and, you know, was buying her Rolex watches, you know, had her wearing, you know, the most expensive clothing possible. Yeah. Pretty much gave her everything, bought her a brand new Mercedes, had her live in lavish. And she said she would rather a broke man that would give her time and love than a man that would give her everything she's ever dreamed of materialistically. 
That's when I understood that women will never be happy because if a woman right now, present day, is willing to trade everything materialistic to be happy over her being with a broke man who's going to give her just emotional love, the world's just backwards at this point. So going back to your story about the wife who has a husband who works nine to five and they have a children and, yeah. she, and she feels like, you know, um, she doesn't spend enough time with the kid. She's a garbage can because <laughs> she should be able to understand him <laughs> and also have good communication with the husband where everybody wins because, I, I mean. What? Is he not spending with uh, time with the kid after 5 p.m.? Like, is he not coming home? Well, like, I didn't listen to any more of it because I was just cringing because I was like, I can see both sides of the party in this situation. I would have threw water at her and walked away. Why would you do that? Because you're promoting the uh, pool party of going. <laughs> you're like, everybody needs to get wet. No. Just grab your ticket. <laughs> Hell yeah, let's do it. Turn me up a little bit. When that music World. comes in, it gets loud. loud. Swissy. Yes. Oh. yes. Hands up, 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 hands up. On roids. I've been hitting so long and I'm a big headed boy Nah, we ain't on HGH Though I might pick up some weight when I'm running through your state Nah, 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 we ain't on the clear We on the runway and back to back legs oh, yeah. It's miss no more drama and Barack Obama Rama's feel honest I put my life on these tracks You act like y'all wanna prepare me for the facts Luckily my therapy is the rap I just bear my soul, I don't expect nothing back You all welcome, look, long as you felt I was gon' get my, if you know where the hell I'm from I'm from the bottom, so I do this from the diapers Quick and fast, turn the big apple into cider I do this, I'm a writer and a writer I spew it cause I'm nicer, but I do this for the lifers I'm a writer and a writer I spew it cause I'm nicer, but I do it for the lifers You welcome Again, somebody so deadly be of the pen. Leave a whole veto by the no more we be in. Big up to Biggie and Pac, I do it for them. Until I reach Kali, I do it for him. Do it for those who can't do for self due to the pen. May these bars reach through your bar. And mine, when Mary sing, it heals your heart. God solely stands filled, you are. Love is a battlefield, we all get scars. Oh, I put my heart into this. This is much more than marketed music. The reason I gotta market to do this is people going through pain. I'm just walking them through this. I'm just, this ain't no marketed music. People going through pain. I'm just talking them to it. Whoa. I think our computer. I think our computer's having a bit of an orgasm, bro. Look at it's like flipping out. Oh my god! I can't. I can't take it. Oh my god! What is this? Oh my god! Let's let the computer fix itself for a second. This following segment. I don't even know what it's been brought to you by. I'm getting a black screen here. It's been brought to you by Mitra-9.com. When I tell you that that's the best kava and kratom in all of the Bay Area, I am a man of my words. Go to Mitra-9.com and at checkout, use keyword hoppy to save 20%. This is also, oh my goodness. This is also being brought to you by dzbzhoney.com the best delta 8 the best cbd honey around if you go to dzbzhoney.com and at checkout use keyword hoppy you can save 20 
percent. This is also being brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at AmirAcademy.com. If you go there during the week and you tell Amir that you heard about it on the award-winning Happy Hour podcast, he will hook you up with a great deal. <sighs> Man. I just love when you're doing a show, it's going really well, and everything crashes. But now I have it loaded up, which is why it's so important as a podcast pharaoh to have sponsors because then you can fill the time when everything goes to crap. Happy hour. Happy hour. Oh, let's do this. And now for something completely different. Call Hoppy now. 856-49 Hoppy. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio or chat. Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. What up? The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Pharaoh, what do you think about people that get into fights at sporting events? Wow. I mean, you're a dork. I think they're losers. Losers. You know, you know why? Because you're ruining the vibe. You're taken away from the real talent, mm-hmm. and you're making things about you. And then, you and really then somebody are. always ends up hurt in these situations. Oh, guess where this fight happened? A San Francisco 49ers game. San Francisco fans acting up. That never happens, Pharaoh. This has never happened. That's- Football fights never. Yeah, fights at a game because you're overcompensating. It's not often you see fans cheering on the same team in a nasty brawl. But that's exactly what happened in San Francisco with haymakers flying and even a knockout. Unclear what led to the massive melee Saturday night at Levi Stadium as the 49ers were the host against the Denver Broncos in a preseason matchup. But it got messy fast. Look at this. They're just fans fighting, wearing a George Kittle sh- uh, shirt. Yeah, I bet George Kittle's so proud of you. He's like, thank you for wearing my fight while getting into a, or thank you for wearing my jersey while getting into a fight. Losers. Losers. You are all, it's always 49ers or LA fans. Philly fans just fight each other, but it's allowed. They got a, they got a jail where the, where the Phillies play. Yeah. Or, uh, I mean, the Eagles. They're probably the Phillies, too. It's just part of the culture right over there. Yeah. Let's just be complete ass wipes. You know what it reminds me of? Whenever you defend a sporting fan base that's not very nice to other people or whatever, or you, this can go with people on radio or people that own bars or whatever. Just, I've, I've experienced this. They go, oh, that's just Philadelphia being Philadelphia. Or, oh, that's just that radio host being that radio. Or that's just the, yeah. You're being a C word. You're being a douche. You know, they excuse it by going, oh, it's just the person. To- yeah. You're being an asswipe. You feel that? Totally do, man. Listen, if you're going to go to a sports game and spend money on that ticket, don't go to jail. Like, yeah. like, what is the point of actually spending $100, $150 on one of these tickets to go see your favorite team to go get your ass whoop and also go to jail? And you're at a preseason game paying Full price tickets. Because the preseason tickets are just as bad as the regular season tickets. It's an abomination. And even worse when your team lost. <laughs> uh, OnlyFans model sells nudes, raises 10000 for Maui Fire after GoFundMe banned her. Um, she went to OnlyFans and took her uh, talents there because she was banned from GoFundMe. By the way, GoFundMe can kiss my ass. You're gaining legitimate money. I get it's a little bit sexual, and all the Karens that run GoFundMe are just mad that she's being open about her body. But heaven forbid you do something delightful to help out something awful in Maui. I'm not going to lie. I just saw the video of her face, and she very good looking. She can get it. All right. So let me promote her, because I want to promote uh, this model here. You can't just go on OnlyFans and do your thing without getting promoted by Ryan Hoppy. Um I mean, those those pictures are pretty explicit. Yeah. It says here, uh, her name is Lava, G-R-L-L. Lava girl. I like it. It says here, uh, I'm going to put this on Hoppy TV so you can see it with me right here. It says here, F it. Sending nudes to everyone who donates at least 
$10 to my Maui wildfire fundraiser. I love this beautiful island too much. Retweet and DM me after donation. I'll be checking. Look at that bad girl. She's wild, bro. You know, like when you're hooking up with a girl and you feel like you're doing all the work and you're hating it. And you know, like when you're hooking up with a girl and she's like kind of moving her legs, if it's like doggy or whatever, and she's kind of putting an effort. That's definitely the putting an effort girl. She puts in a lot of effort, bro. I mean, she's wearing the whole teacher. She's glasses, a lava girl, bro. You know, tongue out. So yeah. she's definitely active. And, and and if she's doing this, she's trying to make some OnlyFans <sighs> money. Her name is Mariah Casillas. Casillas. I bet she's a type that like the only way you can potentially hook up with her if you're in Tampa is you got to take her to the fanciest dinner spot. Yeah, you got to pay at least fifteen hundred and take her to the fanciest spot. Fifteen hundred? What are you saying? She's a hooker? What was the final tally you got to before GoFundMe called? Or how did they, what did they say when they contacted you about shutting it down? Um, so I'm under, I, I think that they had been slowing down traction to the site because I was getting a lot of messages saying that it wasn't working. And so the- Tell me about it. I love user error. Whenever I read anything, think about it. Somebody who's paying for an OnlyFans picture Probably doesn't know how to use a website. So when she's getting DMs, bro, saying, oh, yeah, I don't know how to work the website. Yeah, because you're a 55-year-old boomer paying for a nude picture. Of course, you're not going to know how to use technology. Get out of here. The last number I saw was about 7,800, but I do think that it was being tampered with a little bit with mm. technical difficulties for people, which is strange. But um, they just said that my fundraiser went against their community guidelines. Um, and... I sort of understand, but I don't because it had nothing to do with fun, go find me. We were doing this on a totally different platform and they really. Uh, what I love about TMZ is when you click off the link, it doesn't play. Uh, we are back right now. We weren't involved in the way that they felt they were. Yeah. I and mean, this, 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 this is, this is like a bag shot where it's not like that's the way to put it. You were, they were getting the picture through GoFundMe. You right. were just sending them nothing, separate. There was nothing yeah. that was being seen on GoFundMe. That's right. Right. That's right. There was about like three platforms being used in total. You would donate, you'd get a confirmation. You'd. You know when you talk to like a girl that's on like OnlyFans and she has no personality and she's like, oh my God, I love sex and I love bodily fluids. And then you know when you talk to like an OnlyFans model and she's smart? This definitely is a smart one. Yeah, actually knows how to articulate, you know. Yeah. I mean, but she just looks like she does more than the OnlyFans. You know, like she looks like she goes to the gym, has like, she's probably a bottle girl. Yeah. That's not a. You would know. Yeah. You are the bottle girl capital of the world. Send it to a different uh, platform and a picture would be sent on a different platform. It was a totally, um, we were keeping it separate for sure. Yeah. Heaven forbid you send a nude picture to help out people in Maui. No. It's not like. I don't know. It's not like the government's behind it. <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah, yeah. Hunter Biden can literally bring cocaine into the White House and have a sex tape with Asian hookers. But heaven forbid a girl sends out a nude picture. No! Can you imagine if this happened at the White House? It'd be allowed then. Biden would be like, come on in. It might take 20 minutes, but you got to make sure Jill doesn't see. Uh, I keep forgetting. Did you know that Kanye West is married? That, um, all that all that just messes up like my brain cells because I keep forgetting, bro. Kanye just at this point is marrying anybody just to not feel lonely. Yeah, we've been there. I mean, maybe not you, but uh, Kanye West's wife Bianca Sensory puts on a very risque display in nude cohort for outing in Italy with rapper after igniting fury in a country for going around virtually naked. Describe the outfit. You're good at describing things. Well, she doesn't really look that nude. It looks nude because the color's nude, but she doesn't look nude. Let me see her. I'm putting it on Happy TV. Yeah, look, look, look at that. It looks nude. And I bet the average Karen in Italy. It's the nude color, but she's not nude. I, I mean, would think she was nude from afar, and I would keep checking her out. And I could see, because it's like see-through and kind of light-skinned, because she's light-skinned, so... Yeah, like from like behind, she's definitely got like, she's trying to be Kim Kardashian with short hair and no butt. Very weird. I I don't like Kanye anymore. I haven't liked Kanye in 10 years. I didn't, besides Off the Grid, which is like one of my favorite songs, I thought Donda 2 was horrifically terrible. Okay, that I can give you uh, some kudos on that's true. 
But let's not forget. What do we need to not forget? The life of Pablo was magical. Let's not forget. It wasn't, it wasn't bad. Jesus, it wasn't. Jesus was very. Uh, hey, the bangers on Jesus. Blood on the leaves. You know, give me, like give me Watch the Throne. I and I know that's what everybody said, but give me like that Kanye. Give me like Kanye doing Click in 2012. Give me even Bound to ha, ha, Honey. I'll, I'll take that any day over. Like, um, yeah, not a fan. He's always like winning. Um, the listening battles, though, because think about it. He went up against 50 Cent for, it wasn't the massacre. It was, nah, it, no, no, but I think that was the, for the best producer. Oh. Right? I think. No, it was the same, it was 07, same weekend, because I bought, I bought both, both, Jesus Christ, I can't talk today. I bought both CDs at Walmart, because it was the edited version. It was 50 Cent's uh, album with, I think it was Curtis. Curtis. Then it was Graduation. It was Mm-hmm. And uh, graduation crushed Kanye West, or graduation crushed Fifty Cent's uh, album sales. And then the same thing happened, kind of like thirteen years later. Remember 2020, 2021? It was the same weekend that Drake and Kanye West released music, and uh, it was on Spotify. And everybody claimed that Drake had more listens, but he had like fifty more songs. So it's like, of course you're gonna have more listens. Yeah, but it was it was just like cover after cover. It was like he covered "I'm Too Sexy," but it Drake's was terrible. Drake Drake dropped more singles, and I think that's that's why he beat that situation because Drake dropped more singles. Kanye dropped the whole album. Yeah, he did. You know, but I mean, they're both great artists. Kanye still a piece of shit. Drake still a piece of shit. I mean, I'm Drake's a, kind of a low key pedophile, bro. Like he always kind of talks to underage girls. Speaking about that, what were you going to say? And then I'll bring up something. What were you going to say? Um, I think that all the artists right now are pieces of shits, but their talent is there. And, you know, kind of going back and touching bases on, on the Drake thing, Drake right now, he just, he's on a high horse. So right now he feels like he could do whatever he wants. He, yeah. can, he can smash any girl he wants. He could just slide in the DMs. He's getting older, though, bro. He has been, Drake has been looking old recently, dog. Drizzy Drake Rogers. He uh, has that song, I think it was uh, Ashton Martin, where he talks about having a midlife crisis at age 23. No, he's definitely having it now. He looks, I don't want to say bad, but you know, like the saying, black don't crack? Drake definitely cracks a little bit. He doesn't look as young. I don't know if he's not taking care of himself or not doing skin routines, but he looks his age. I mean, let's not forget, he's, he's a little bit more on the, on the white side. That's that's a solid point by Pharaoh. I didn't think about that. His mom, his mom is white, and his dad is. I don't even think his, uh, his dad's like mixed. So I know that always white. gets kind of. Listen, I'm a very white Caucasian man, but I know that always gets kind of controversial. It's like because like you've seen that before. You hear about it. That person's not that black or whatever. You know that da da da. It's weird. Uh, it's one of those things where, <laughs> as a very Caucasian public figure, I go, I'm not talking about that. You know, there's some things that you don't need to give your opinion on. You don't always need to give your opinion on everything. No, that's a fact right there. So we're going to come back. That's a hoppy fact. Yeah, it is. It's a hoppy hot topic. Oh, hoppy hot topic. All right. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about some more things for another 20 minutes. Vero, I'm ready to take over the radio world. Like, it doesn't feel real. Like, the other day, about a month ago, we were maybe smoking, and we were chilling, and I was about to cry because I didn't get a job or whatever, and you were like, keep grinding, and then we saw Orlando in the parking lot and Jeff Zito, and there was a lot of good conversations that went down, and I love Orlando, and uh, then a month later, Vero, just a month later, uh, your mic's off, sorry, just a month later, that things are starting to really look up for Ryan Hoppy, which that says a lot because everybody looks up to me. So when I look up to something, because you got to be careful who you look up to. You got to be careful who your mentors are. But if you choose wisely, bro, you can go pretty far in life. Happy hour. Happy hour. All right, we'll be right back.
Oh, yeah. This following segment has been brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com. When I tell you that that's the best printing company in all of the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. Go to WestChasePrinting.com and on the invoice, use keyword hoppy. This is also being brought to you by Rich Keeley Master Barbershop. The best barber in all of the Bay Area, RichKBarber.com. This is also being brought to you by FitStageFitness.net. Devin Prasad, the best workout trainer in all the Bay Area. Uh, CounselingOnCall.net. If you need to work on your mental health and you live in Maryland or Florida, go to CounselingOnCall.net. And tell him I sent you. Farrell, we got about 14 minutes left on the show, and I want to just have continuous conversation. So I'm going to ask you real quick. Promote everything going on in the world of Farrell. Listen, so <laughs> yeah, what's up? appreciate you guys listening to Hoppy Radio, yeah. where we talk about everything, the lies, the, the lines are never blurred. Nope. Nothing I mean, is taboo. I mean, I mean, sometimes we're blurred. Nothing you know, is sacred. We, we would try to keep it, you know, as as clean as possible. And we are going to clean it up because we we got to clean it up a little bit. Not not too much. Yeah. But what's going on in the world of Pharaoh? So what's going on is we got a lot of a lot of a lot of events going on next week. Yes. Next week is going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. We are celebrating Ryan Hoppy's Dirty Thirty. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. And it starts on Thursday. Uh, I guess Ryan's going to go to, I think, St. Pete on, what, Thursday and Friday? September 1st, downtown St. Pete, Saturday, 1701. Yeah, so uh, starting- going to be naughty. Exactly. So starting next Saturday, we have room 1701. We're going to go out there and hang out, probably mm-hmm. go to after hours and make sure, you know, that we're that we that we're spending the Labor Day weekend how it's supposed to be spent. Yeah. And of course, that Sunday- that Sunday, it's going all down. Dude, it doesn't even seem real. Like, I've been watching some of your social media, bro. Oh, my God. It's going all down at the Funhouse Pool Party located in Northdale. So, listen, if you are listening to this, make sure to go to my Instagram at YNG Pharaoh, Y-N-G-P-H-A-R-O-H, and get all the info. We got bottles. We got a bar. We have ladies. We have stripper poles, VIPs. We have everything you need. And, of course, my dog and my brother, Ryan Hoppy, will be in the building getting sturdy for his dirty 30. Why oh, that kind of rhyme? You like that? Getting sturdy for the dirty 30. Hell yeah. And there's going to be a lot of, um, first of all, and then a lot of, just got to figure out where. It's going to be a lot of hunching. <laughs> And listen, don't forget, we also got an after party. The after party is going to be at Passion Lounge, and that's going to be- What is a Passion Lounge? That sounds effing phenomenal. Yeah, Passion Lounge is going to be where the party is going to end, and I'm going to need some 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 things to keep me up, you know what I'm saying? Because it's going to be a long day for me. You can do those things. I'm just going to be half asleep. Happy hour. Happy hour. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Every EDM song in 2012 had that. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Ladies and gentlemen. All right, back to the content. Most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. How's your week been, Pharrell? It's only Monday. It feels like a Thursday. I don't know why. Listen, I had a crazy weekend. The What'd weekend, you do this weekend, I, uh, Friday. I forgot. What did I do Friday? Oh, Friday, I yeah. went out with my friends. We got super drunk in Ybor City. Hell yeah! And then You we, can't be sober in Ybor. You can't. And then um, there's a spot called the... I think it's called the Reservoir. I don't I've know. I've heard about it. Yeah. Tell me about it. So it's $10 drinks. Yeah, for, not bad. For a double of what of whatever liquor you like. So, yes, Jack and Coke, Red Bull and Vodka. Yeah, so we go out there and make yeah. sure that we leave with no brain cells or a sense in our head. And Just um, don't drive. We actually got there late. So then I told my crew, I said, hey, guys, yeah, but- there's no way in hell we just came to Ebor City and then we only stayed here for about like 30 minutes. It's time to step it up a notch yes. and hit the after hours. And where'd you go for the after hours, Farah? We, we went to my spot called uh, Fuego Lounge, a.k.a. Um, El I've, Poblado. I've heard about Fuego, bro. Yeah, Fuego's the spot. Fuego. And uh, Fuego's Fuego. And we went out there. <laughs> we got a VIP, popped three bottles. And I can tell you right now, uh, that Friday was probably like the, like one of the only Fridays that I've, I've thought I was going to get a DUI. Because my I, I could not see clearly when I was driving. 
And it's, it's good to admit. Yeah. So, uh, you know, thank, thank the Lord he actually had my back and I made it home. Yeah. But my girl was just trying to mix liquors and, you know, I was trying to make sure that, you know, I wasn't being no boring motherfucker. But that's what happens is when you mix the liquor, you're never sicker, whatever the saying is. Yeah. Something like that. But that's what happened on Friday. Saturday, you know, full, full shebang. Try to, I love a good shebang. Yeah, try to try to recuperate. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I got jiggy. And what's the key to getting jiggy? How does Pharaoh get down and get jiggy? I get down and dirty. But I'm uncomfortable now. <laughs> like I'm cool with it, but God, gross. Well, what's your go-to move to get jiggy? Um, I don't know. I, Legs up in the air, like you don't care. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I feel like you, you, you always need the TV on to like, you know, what I'm saying, keep the eyes. You know, what I'm saying, just, just on the TV show. I like, I like hunching on, the, like while the TV's on, watching the show and hunching. Yeah, but then like I need to like turn it off. If it's like a crime documentary or something, I don't want to be like. No, no, but I'm not gonna be watching no crime documentary. I'm. What are you? Be- what are you watching for your hunch? No, nah, I mean. <laughs> It has to be like an interesting show where like you can kind of do both at the same time, you know? Like what? How are dude, when I'm getting laid, all I want to think about is getting laid. I'm not trying to like focus on Ozark or whatever. No, I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to keep my focus on, so you know <laughs> I ain't trying to be a quick pumper, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> But if you need Ozark to not be a quick pumper, bro, come on now. You're Pharaoh. Yeah. You gotta you got a little bit of a legacy in these streets. You of gotta course. Just, so listen, yeah. after I get that done. Yeah, what what happened? You know, we uh we 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 get ready, boom, slide to 1701. Mm. And and then after 1701, got we, your fly down, messy hair, like you don't care. Like we don't care. <laughs> and then look, and then at Sunday, listen, yesterday, yesterday was a long day for me because I was actually getting the stuff ready for the pool party. And you went to church and you were prayed to God. I'm like, I'm sorry about all my debauchery. <laughs> I wish. Um, God's not real. Listen, my back was hurting because me and the gang mm. actually went and and, and and tried to set up the VIPs for the pool party so we could have everything two weeks ahead. And um, yeah, it was it was a long day. It was a long day. But listen, the weekend was good. How was your weekend? Uh, Friday, Saturday, worked with Mo Bounds. That was fun. Saturday. Why? I did have my date on Sunday. Oh, let's talk about the date. Because, look, you called me and you told me about it. So I know these. it has to be something, you know, uh, mesmerizing for you. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out, like, not what it is, but it was the first time in probably two years that I've gone on a date and I've been like, damn, I like this girl. You know, like a lot of times you're like with a girl and you're chilling and you're like, oh, I want to get laid right now. She looks pretty hot. But bro, we went out for sushi, got a few drinks, chilled in my apartment and watched a cartoon, smoked a little. I don't know. I move fast. So I'm just, I'm playing a chill right now. I know she's probably going to listen to this. Hello. But like. It's just interesting because, like, I actually enjoyed my time. Listen, the thing is, yeah, is, is you're a lover. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want to say you move fast. You're just a lover. You, you believe in love. You believe in, in, in. It's because I'm like kind of Roman Catholic. I'm a slutty Roman Catholic that doesn't believe in God. I, <laughs> but I love. It's, it's, it's a lot of controversy in everything you said. You're a slutty. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're a, you're a, you're, you're a lover. <laughs> you're a slutty lover. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's Roman Catholic and atheist? Yes, all four in one. Well, I have the Roman Catholic vibes of like not cheating. Like I've literally never cheated. Okay, I've okay. had the women morals, be like, morals. I've had women be like, I literally want to have sex with you, and I go, No, I'm in a relationship with a sociopath. Sorry, sorry, I don't want to get stabbed. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to wake up tomorrow. They'll just break my heart in five months. No big deal. No, um, I don't know, because I just. I move so fast, but I really dig her. And you know I dig somebody when I'm being private about it. That's the other thing. It's whatever, because I do want a relationship. I don't think I want kids, but whatever I manifest in the future, I'm debating about how public I want to be with it. Because when you go through breakups and you're a public figure, bro, and you kind of make the other significant other, it's like a celebrity kind of. Everybody asks where your ex is. 
Trust me. Um, I've been through the situation, and I have no problem making the other person look bad. So I'm, I'm with all the smoke. Uh, you know how I make the person look bad? I don't reply. It's... There's a beauty... What's going on here? There's a beauty in not responding. There is a... Why is the microphone... This board, bro, the world's ending right now. I'm telling you. There's a beauty in not responding. <laughs> Was that like that? <laughs> <laughs> what did the knobs came off? This show, the knobs, the knobs coming off too. This show's going crazy. Um, We'll see. I don't know because I don't want to move fast. And like, there's all the like dating videos where it's like, you got to let her text first and that. But I don't want to be too clingy. Like I haven't talked to her in a day and I, I don't want to be like, like we both mutually know that we both have free time to hang out. But like, I kind of, I don't want to say I want to be chased. But I want to be like wanted, you know, because you never I don't even know if I've ever been wanted or if my previous girlfriends were just with me for free concert tickets and whatever I can provide. You know, like it'd be nice to date somebody and not have to worry about like, oh, are they with me for clout? Because there's like there's a common denominator. There's a certain fact. There's some things in life, Pharaoh, that are debates. If God's real, blah, blah, blah. There's no debate here. Same with you, but I'm a fucking catch. I don't cheat. I lay the pipe. May not be the richest guy, but I'm close. I'm telling you. Look at me. Effing handsome. I'm a good looking guy. So are you. We're the best looking guys in Tampa Radio. Not saying much. I, there's always that line, a face for radio or whatever, but... If there was a face of a city that represents a face for radio, it would be Tampa. There are some ugly, not myself included, because I'm so handsome. There's some ugly people on radio in this town, literally and figuratively. This is, we're doing a podcast that will be on the radio soon, but we are the lowest on the totem pole when it comes to, I don't want to say talent, but celebrity. And all these people, Taking phones and exploiting people. And I'm wondering why no one wants to be around you. Since birds evolved into humans, man has had one question. Do Marcus Jordan and Larsa Pippen have a panini maker on their wedding registry? We only ask because of this. What's the possibility of, of a marriage happening between you and Larsa? We're looking for a location. So, uh, Marcus and Larsa were leaving Jones in WeHo. And why does Marcus like her? She's so like, ah, she's hot. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't, I would totally hook up with her, but she's so like, ah. I think right now he's like, he's yeah. pretty much like, you ever had that like dream when you were little, like to like, like be with an older woman? Well, I've, I've done it. So it's fun. Yes. Yeah. So he's living it right now. Yeah. He's probably hooked up with all the girls his age. It just happens to be, uh, his dad's, uh, ex-wife. <laughs> No, his dad's, his dad's former teammate's ex-wife that dad's, she his that dad's she, number one enemy. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, like, I, we shouldn't even get too deep into this again, but you it's went fun. and smashed your dad's number one enemy and, and you scored. Oh, actually, no, this is funny. Michael Jordan scored again because he, he, he got him. Yeah. And the cameras asked them like, hey, do you guys have a date? Work. Oh my God! So Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen are gonna have to be part of a wedding plan. Scott? I don't think Scottie's going to that. He's not going. Scottie doesn't get to go. He's the ex-husband. Why would he go to his ex-wife's wedding? You think Scottie has to give away Larsa? There's a rule I have when they start yelling at me on TMZ. I'm the one that does the yelling here. Finally, Netflix. Who remembers Netflix before streaming? You know, back you when it worked DVD? like this. Yeah. There's a better way to rent movies. As many as you want for just 20 bucks a month. And Did you ever take part in the renting of DVDs? Of course. I remember um, they used to come like in a, in a pamphlet. Yeah, they did. And uh, also the music. The music was like the number one thing because CDs were like hot back in the day. So you would read the pamphlet and the pictures of the, of the music that you wanted to buy or the album would mm -hmm. be there. And I think it was what, 10 bucks? Yeah, and it says right here. And no late fees. Go to Netflix.com. Make a list of the movies you want to see. And in about one business day, you'll get three DVDs. Keep them as long as you want, without late fees. Then when you're done, look. Prepaid envelopes. Return one, and they'll send you another movie from your list. It's easy. 
Netflix. That's when I learned what a Q was. Wow. I'm like, what's a Q? A ah. It's like, oh, your Netflix yep. Q. Remember all the movies? Oh, the you had yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you had to put in your Q. Well, sadly, it is the end of an era. Back in April, Netflix announced it would be ending the DVD by mail option after Who the 25 hell is- years. Who the hell is doing that? Who would be like, I want a DVD? Uh, the only DVD player I probably have is my PS4. Somebody in Alaska. <laughs> the same people that keep Blockbuster open. But if you like vintage tech, we've got some good news. This week, the company told folks who are still subscribed to the DVD service that they could opt in to receive up to 10 extra discs oh. and you get to keep them. They'll be. Sh- yeah, please give me something that I can't really use unless I have a DVD player. I mean. You know what my go-to move was? The library. I had a really nice library by my house, the top 10 in the nation in Chicago. And they, you would ask them to buy DVDs and they would buy you whatever you want. Family Guy season four. I got you. Aqua Teen Hunger Force, The Sopranos. I never, my aunt would ask me ahead of time whenever she'd have a Christmas party, what movie do you want? And it'd be like Polar Express or whatever from Netflix. But we never had it. I've only been a part of the streaming uh, era. So you're telling me you used to go to your library. Yes, sir. And you used to tell the library to buy whatever you They had a suggestion box, and I would just look up whatever DVD came out that week at Best Uh, Buy. It was pretty baller. Okay, so you were were scamming the library since young. Hell yeah, I was. And now going to, (laughs) Romeo said it best the other day. He's like, you go into a comic bar is essentially you going to the library. And I was like, wow, it's it's not a bad analogy. You know, I remember going to the library back in the day. It was actually fun. You would sit down. You had like what, like 12, internet? Yeah, like twelve. And you could like computers. That's how I got into radio. I'd look up radio. I'd listen to afternoon shows. I would watch Adult Swim because at home I didn't have internet in my room. And my, I'd tell my dad I was doing homework. I was just listening to rap music. Everything I'm into, I got from between fifth to ninth grade at the library. Wow, what a hoodlum! I know, right? Such a badass hanging out at the library. There was this one guy I think who was probably on the spectrum. But he was also a pedophile, and there was a CD collection area, and then there was, like, the computer lab with, like, 25 computers separated by cubicles, and he used to just, like, watch us. And he lived at the local community center for people that have autism that can't live on their own, and we had to, like, tell them. He was he would go to all the basketball games, and he went to all the high school events, and he would just sit there by himself eating popcorn, and, like, and like what man. A cool, what a cool dude. <laughs> what a cool dude. <laughs> That guy needed uh, definitely Bumble and uh, and Tinder. He would need uh, to hang out with Juan de Franco. Did you get that? Not really. You don't you, you don't know about the Juan de Franco thing? No, but it sounds like it's gonna be something you don't, crazy. You don't know crazy AF. My man, you didn't hear? Do you know who Juan de Franco is? No, can I plays see a for the Tampa Bay Rays. Twenty two years old. From the Dominican Republic, I believe. Wait, is this the is this the guy that uh no 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 what what are you gonna say? Finish it. Is this is this the guy that you know allegedly has uh some accusations against him over a, a young underage? Oh, there we go. Talking to fourteen year olds. Oh man. I mean, what the hell's wrong with you? This is not on the radio yet, so I'll swear. And if I do, I'll beep it out in the future. What the fuck's wrong with you? But um. Can you kind of confirm this for me? So, what? so the girl is in DR right now, or she's a, a Tampanian girl? She's in DR, and he's kept in touch. And the mom allows it. The mom oh, is. I believe it. I believe it. But, but you know why though? Money. The moolah. And guess what? <laughs> the mom just is trying to get out of her her poverty situation. So use your daughter to hang out with a pedophile. Good idea, mother of the year. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I mean, this is really like some some undercover culture, but a lot of a lot of Latin communities or not communities, but countries, you know, do stuff like this. Oh, I bet. Yeah, and it's kind of arranged marriages in a way. It's exactly so. I mean, it, it's just kind of how you look at it. Yeah. Um, well, I'm gonna look at it as he's a pedophile, and I don't care that he makes 180 million to play for the Rays. He's a creep. Don't worry, the FBI won't either. <laughs> he's going to jail. Uh, do you think so? Well, I mean, Dominican Republic authorities are kind of looking into it. So who knows? Because does it say who kind of out of here? Because this is just random. I, I know. And then the weird part is like the Tampa media already is pretty nice to the baseball team because anybody who's in the media needs to be friends with the baseball team to uh, have connections. Like in Chicago and Philly, you can talk smack and have. But Tampa Bay media is very nice to the sporting teams. But I'll tell you right now that nobody's talked about it. This is just a you know why because right now he's not he's not one hundred percent accused. Yeah, it's very I know I know it's very bizarre. Yeah, 
Mike Caltas shoving a woman to the ground, nothing. And then you got Wanda Franco potentially being a pedophile, nothing. It's like you got Bubba's sex tape back in the day. No, it's just like Tampa has no morals. Jesus, you got people taking phones. Like it's just, it's, it's just Tampa Give me Bay. My phone. Tampa th- Bay is just th- another that, city. That joke will never get old. It will never get old. Uh, the best part. How do I word this? Give me a second. So everybody knows about my breakup. Everybody is put on the radio. Ba 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 da da da. Let's just say it hurt. It bothered me. It pissed me off. But let's just say that karma is a beautiful thing. Because if you go on Reddit and you search some, let's say, Tampa celebrities, the juicy details that I've been talking about, I'm not the only one that knows that Tampa Bay is the best city. Happy hour. Happy hour.